Well, uh, let's get started. Last week, um, I I basically spent the whole time talking about a rationale, sort of why I do family history, what what gets me going, and uh, offered some really high level tips for um, an approach to family history. I also acknowledged last week that some people have a different, um, you know, a different motivation for doing family history. And all of these motivations, I think, are legitimate. Uh, there, I don't think there's any one correct reason to be doing it. Um, it is a, it can be a very satisfactory, satisfying activity um, from a religious and spiritual standpoint, thinking eternally. It can also be very satisfactory from a purely temporal standpoint, uh, solving mysteries and um, understanding, you know, your pedigree better. Uh, and I encourage you to, um, to experiment and you know spend a little bit of time and if you're like me every you know i don't know what it is every two or three months uh you'll you'll get a spurt of energy towards family history and you'll spend a few nights late into the night you know <laughs> um uh, researching something um uh tonight oh, by the way i got all the dates wrong last week i don't know what i was thinking but tonight uh june 4th we're going to be uh, talking about getting started on your tree, taking first steps. Uh, and the next week we'll, we'll dive into more detail and, and uh, I think a lot more detail into researching and documenting uh, specific people in your tree. Uh, on the 18th, I'll focus on solving mysteries and uh, the, what I go through to do it. And then uh, on the 25th, we'll talk about preparing names for temple ordinances. <clears throat> um, Last week was a pre-recorded thing, and so I didn't get any interruptions. It was awesome. I could just talk. Uh, and tonight, I'll, I'll ask, go on mute if you would. It sounds like you all are on mute. But if you have a question as we go along, uh, I think we have plenty of time to answer questions as we go along. And uh, and then if, at the end, uh, if I haven't heard much or if we've got some extra time, I'll uh, I'll open it up for additional questions as well. All right, so let's dive right in. Um, I'm, I'm basically focusing this on the beginner, and then with each passing week, uh, we'll, I hope to provide more um, content and more depth for people who are further along in their you know, skill and experience doing family history. But tonight is going to be pretty basic. Um, however, uh, it's not so basic that I'm going to show you how to log into Ancestry.com or FamilySearch.org. We will be using both of them. Uh, and I would encourage you, if you're going to stay with me on this uh, journey, that you make sure that you have a uh, an account on both. With FamilySearch.org, you log in with your LDS login, uh, the same one that you log in to uh, look at the ward calendar on, uh, you know, online. Oh, I heard that. Hold on. I see somebody's trying to join, but I got to go find them. There they are. Admit. Jerry? Jerry's coming in again? All right. Uh, I am presenting back to here. Um, so uh, that's how you log into Family Search. And then if you don't have a Ancestry.com uh, account, you are... you you're uh, allowed to have one as a member of the LDS church and you can um, you can get it by going to the URL that you see at the bottom of the screen here. Email me afterwards if you uh, would like to have me text it over to you or whatever. Uh, and it's very simple. Um, uh, family search and LD and family search and ancestry have a, an agreement. So you get a, a basic ancestry.com um, account just by virtue of the fact that you got baptized in the LDS church. Pretty sweet deal. All right. Um, I want to talk just for a second before I before I actually go into Ancestry and Family Search. I want to talk to just give my point of view on uh, how they're different and why I use one, why I use both of them for different reasons. Um, Ancestry is my preferred genealogy tool for research. Um, it has an easy user interface. Um, uh, the hints engine, which I'll show you in a few minutes, is uh, I think it's great, uh, and it's really easy to um, 
follow the hints and then to accept the hints and attach new sources to your people. I don't find I find that the FamilySearch.org uh, source engine is uh, much more difficult for me to understand and navigate. The user interface is not as uh, simple, and a lot of times when I'm doing basic research, just trying to build out the hypothesis of who these people are. I want to move quickly. I want to gather as much as I can, put it all in one place, and then go back to it and begin to weed out the inaccuracies or or if there's any, you know, any, I don't know, detail that isn't quite right. I, I go back and do that usually. Um, I And that's why I use Ancestry as my, like a sandbox for research. Um, and one of the reasons for that is uh, in Ancestry, every user has their own tree. Uh, you create a tree in Ancestry and you begin to populate it with people and it's your tree. No one else can see your tree unless you want them to. You grant them access, but it's your tree. And that means you can do whatever you want. Um, you can be as, um, you know, seriously awesome and accurate and a stickler for detail in uh in Ancestry, or you can just flood the zone with as much data as you want, like I do, and then clean it up on your own time. Um, continuing on the left side here, I maintain my own tree, uh, and the people in my tree might be different than the people in your tree. As you, let's say that, uh, well, let's see, who, who am I related to in the ward? Um, I'm related to Keenan Roylance and to, uh, oh, to Brother Lemon. Uh, I have a lemon who's a great, great grandmother, um, and it's the same branch of the tree. And there's at least one other person, I'm forgetting who it is, that I'm also related to in the ward. Uh, if Jason Lemon is in Ancestry building the lemon family tree, and he begins to populate it with this person, that person, the grandfather's grandmother's cousins and all that kind of stuff, it's a completely separate tree with his research um, than mine. And my tree, with the, maybe we're uh, uh, trying to research the same part of our shared common heritage, uh, we could very well uh, take different evidence or different hints or different um, uh, documents, interpret them differently, and come up with different people in our trees. So, so I say this uh, because if I change something in a record, only I can see those changes. And that's why I feel really comfortable using Ancestry as my research tool, because it's private in, in the sense that I'm not um, stepping on anyone else. I don't have to answer to anyone else, um, you know, and explain why I uh, now think that uh, my great great grandfather died on June 3rd and not on June 5th or whatever the case may be. Now, Family Search, on the other hand, you've already read family, the whole column like six times while I was blathering on about Ancestry, but um, in Family Search, there's only one worldwide tree. We're all sharing a common tree. It's a really unique idea, and I think it's unique uh, uh, among the major genealogy services. Uh, everyone is working on the same tree. So when we go to a record in Family Search, it's there's only one of that person, my great great grandfather. Uh, if I make a change or add something to it, it's changed for everyone. Uh, or if they do that, um, it's changed. I see what what they've done. I love it. Uh, one of the reasons I love it is one of the problems that I mentioned on last week's uh, uh, call is uh, things like documents and photos. Um, they get um, diluted and spread across very widely across your family tree pretty quickly and those those that information disappears you don't i don't have access to my second cousins routinely um and yet they have stuff that is really uh, applicable to me because it's up to my great-grandfather or my great-great-grandfather well anyway in family search when one of my second or third cousins posts a photo of great-great-grandpa lyle Guess what? I see it too. I'm the beneficiary of their work on that same person or, or a story or a journal or, I mean, there's no end of the great work that I, you know, their research, I get 
I get access to their research as well. So it's, I, I really love family search for that reason. And that's why I use family search as my, um, what I want to call it, my preferred documentation area. Um, because I can, I can noodle around in ancestry all I want. And then when I feel like I really have it figured out, I've got good sources, uh, and, uh, sort of I'm pretty rock solid on the, um, the information about that person, then I can move it over to family search, uh, and I can defend very easily what I've done up there. On that last bullet point there, if there are disagreements about the facts, I must negotiate with others. I didn't, I couldn't think of a better way to say it. <laughs> uh, on family search, and I'll be showing this to you in a, in more detail in a subsequent uh, episode of our little webcast here. But in family search, if I say that great great grandpa Lyle died on June 3rd, I change it from June 5th to June 3rd, and I type in why I think that's so, then I might get a, uh, a note on that record or even via email from someone saying, hey, you changed his death date. What evidence do you have for that? My family records show he died on June, what, you know, the other date, and I've had that for years. Uh, and so, so an interchange begins to happen as we crowdsource the truth about great, great grandpa Lyle or whoever the person is. For some people, they might find that a little bit uh, intimidating or off-putting that you have to defend your work on family search, but it is not a rude place. People, I've never seen it that way. Um, there are a few records where I've seen people be quite passionate with really lengthy, you know, three and five paragraph explanations of why they did such and so and challenging people to find the, the mistake in their logic. But I love that. Um, it shows that someone is really spending the time and effort to make sure we get it right. So um, this is my, my basic uh, uh, approach. That's why you're going to see me using both. And the good news is once you get something done in Ancestry, uh, a record for a family member, and you feel good about it, you can link the record between Ancestry and Family Search, essentially uh, merging what you've done in Ancestry and pushing it up to family search so that all of those sources and that information that you've researched so carefully uh, uh, gets put up onto family search. You don't have to re-enter it um, once you get up there. So we'll, uh, we'll show more detail about that at a later time, but I, I wanted to at least give you the reason for why I use both. And we're gonna use both tonight. All right, so let's get started. Um, and we're going to get started with this gentleman right here. Uh, and this gentleman is, uh, well, it's David Grant's grandfather. Is that right, David? Correct. Yes, it's my, my mom's, mom's dad. All right. Tell me just a little bit about him. You don't have to give a whole whatever. What do you know about this guy? He was a fisherman. He was born in Peterhead. One of the most northern parts of Scotland. Um, we don't quite know how he ended up uh, further south, but he ended up in Musselburgh, and um, where he met my my granny, and they got married, and he later became a roofer. So no longer did he go out to fish; he was up there slating the roofs for many many years. And um, he, during World War Two, he went over to oh. Burma, Bangladesh, I th oh, I don't remember, it's lost me now, but he was driving the tanks for the, the British Army, and so he was obviously gone for quite a few years, um, came back I think in 44, and then had three daughters with my with my granny. Um, I uh, Did you know him? Oh yeah, yep, 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 he died in 94, died from cancer. Oh, all right. So... Well, you certainly have a, a bit of a family resemblance. I, I see Owen in him <laughs> uh, and uh, maybe others at different ages. But uh, when I saw this picture, I thought, yep, yeah, I definitely have the right person. Yep. Um, for tonight's exercise, I asked David to provide me with just this basic information. The name of your grandfather, when he was born and where, when he died and where. And most of us know this information about our grandparents. 
um, or or it's easy to get either by going to an aunt or a parent uh, and you can usually get um, this basic information if you can get more than this i encourage you to do it and you know we live in a time right now well there was this big push for uh, genealogy and family group sheets and all that back in the 70s and 80s and if you have lds heritage chances are that uh, somebody has you know these really thick <laughs> books or books of remembrance that are full of family group sheets you know that uh, that have all that have lots of data about family members um, and you should get that from them uh, and it's a start all right, so here's our goal for tonight. We're gonna, whoops, we're gonna take uh, this information and we're going to gather as much information about as many members of David's tree as possible. Uh, and as I alluded to a minute ago, we're gonna go into ancestry. We're not gonna worry too much about accuracy just yet. Um, my, our goal for tonight is to is to build a big tree, to put a lot of branches on the tree and a lot of leaves on the tree. We're not going to be super concerned about accuracy uh, because that'll just slow us down from tonight's goal. So let's get started with that. All right. And uh, back into it. So um, let me see. To do that, we're going to pop over to our uh, web browser here and we'll go into, uh, is this Ancestry? Yes, it is. And uh, we're going to create a tree. This is the same thing that you would do. Create and manage a tree. Uh, create a new tree. Uh, oh, dang it. Well, okay, we'll add a home person. It is David Grant. Whoops. Wow, bad typing. David Grant. He is male. He is living. And I don't really care about your birthday, so we're just going to continue. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and add a father. Uh, actually, well, I'll add him. What the heck? Um, you know your father's name. What was his name? What is his name? Sorry. It's it was Tom, well, it's Thomas Bullock. Thomas Grant. Thomas Grant. He, oh, he's deceased. Uh, yep. And uh, since we're not going to be going on his uh, on his side of the house tonight. Well, let's uh, let's put it anyway. Do you remember his birthday or the year? It was nineteen forty-seven. Nineteen forty-seven. Yeah, November nineteenth, if you want an actual date. And when did he die? He died April fifth, two thousand five. In Scotland, right? Yes, sir. Now, notice that I'm not being super. Uh, I'm not. I'm not really. I've got more information that I'm entering here, but uh, I'm just for the interest of moving quickly. I'm just entering some basic stuff. And one of the reasons for that is that Ancestry does a lot of the work for you. Um, now let's go in and add your mother. Um, I'm just for today. I'm just going to call her Mrs. Grant, uh, even though you know what her name is. Whoops. Mrs. Grant. Uh, she's a female. It doesn't matter. She's de is she living or deceased? She's living. Living. Okay. And so let's press save there, because I'm right now. I'm just trying to get to this one person that you told me about, right? Your mother's father. This is the dude who the the man in question, the the star of tonight, and that is Robert Hooker. Robert Hooker. Cool. Wow. Robert Hooker. Uh, he's a male. He's deceased. He was born, you said, 14 November, whoops, November uh, 1920. Yep. And in Peterhead, sorry, I'm going to use the, uh, uh, I don't know, what do I want to call it? The American pronunciations today. Uh, he died 12th of May. Uh, you got it right. You said Peterhead. We're good. I know, but the next one I'm going to murder, and I'm not even going to be apologetic. <laughs> Uh, Musselburg, <laughs> Musselburg, Scotland. Now, notice that Ancestry is trying to hint, you know, help me here by uh, when it recognizes it'll go, oh, well, I know what the county or the shire is and I know what the country is, so uh, I'll help you out. And, and usually it's right. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and select that. All right. So there we've done it. 
we've gotten to the man of the hour, Robert Hooker. And uh, I think if I just click on that and click profile, I tend to work in this mode, this, uh, uh, not the tree, the tree I find hard to navigate through. Um, but instead I tend to use this mode here. This is the main screen of ancestry for a person. And uh, it's, it's really easy for me to understand. I'm gonna take just a minute to show you what it's about. On the right are his family members. And you'll see his parents, who we don't know yet. Uh, easy to add them if we do. His spouse. I don't have a spouse yet. Um, although we do know that um, Robert Hooker's daughter became Mrs. Grant because uh, he she married David's mother. Or sorry, David's father. Um, and uh, let's see. So that's you can sort of get a sense for who it is. The basic information about the person is here. Uh, and then we have uh, four tabs here. Uh, the life story, which is, uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that. It's, a, it's their attempt to, in text and pictures, put together sort of a narrative of the person's life. Um, I find it a little bit hokey, um, but uh, you might like it. Um, the facts, I love the facts. On the left are the facts that we know. And when we start uh, attaching sources to those facts, you'll see the sources in the middle. Um, there's a gallery. In the gallery, we will put things like photographs, uh, images of documents, uh, any kind of document, indeed. And then lastly is something called hints. And I love hints. Uh, in in this, uh, in Ancestry.com, uh, they have an engine that's constantly going out and mining uh, documents looking for matches to this basic information about this person. Uh, and it, it will very soon begin presenting me with, um, with examples of those, of those hints, which I can then take and uh, evaluate. And if they, are, if they match this person, I add them as a source to my record about Robert Hooker, and I begin building out the facts about Robert Hooker. Uh, and let's just see if there's any yet. It usually takes about two or three minutes um, on my big night here. You know, just my luck, there won't be one. Uh, let's give it a minute. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go uh, up here and do a search. And do a search. There we go. And let's, uh, it went ahead and assumed I wanted to do a search on Robert Hooker. Um, over here, the filters are saying, oh, um, you know, maybe maybe sort of his name might be like Hooker and maybe he was born the same. I'm going to say, uh, no, I want it to be a lot more accurate than that because uh, I I know that this is my man uh, and when where he was born and all that. Um, and I'll update the search. And look at this. I've got some, uh, some hits here. Um, and these are going to help me in my research. So I see a matching person from a family tree. Oh, look at this. It found someone else's family tree, who another user of uh, Ancestry.com that has said, hey, if people want to see my tree, I don't have a problem with that. And it found uh, him uh, and some more information. The name of his mother, maybe, the name of his uh, wife, father. Uh, this stuff seems accurate, and because if I was David Grant, I would look at this and go, well, indeed, uh, that is the name of my mother. I'm sorry, of, actually, that's the name of your aunt, right? Yes. David, yeah, Catherine Kay, and then your grandmother's name, uh, maiden name, Elizabeth Fargy, is that how it's pronounced? That, that's, no, that's my great granny. All right, so we've got the right, uh, the names are matching and the dates. So this looks promising, but before I before I go there, uh, I like that we've got some photographs here from somebody. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in fact, let's look at this one right here. Uh, I saw this the other night, and this is where I got that picture of Robert. And that I could say, I was like, here's Liam. If you guys know the Grant kids, there's Liam. Here is uh, half Owen, half Aiden. Uh, 
and I don't know who that is. That doesn't look like anybody I know, but um, I see a family resemblance. And maybe more important when I see this, I'm looking at the tagging that the user who, um, who put this together, this is in someone else's tree, um, that they have on this. Look at these names here. If they've linked it to Elizabeth Fargy, James Gordon Hooker. Well, if I'm David Grant, I recognize all these names um, and that's awesome. But I, when I first looked at this uh, the other day, I was sort of practicing for tonight to see, make sure I wasn't gonna <laughs> come up empty handed. Um, I, I saw these names and I was like, okay, this, uh, the family resemblance, yes. Uh, and I like the, uh, the names look right. You know, and so I, I was like, I want to remember these names and begin to explore those in my tree. In fact, let me just uh, pop back over to here. Um, so uh, this is that same picture, and I sort of took a snapshot of those things. And I began to uh, th come up with a theory of who these people are in this picture. And who, you know, that the father's name is most likely James Gordon Hooker. And it is, right? Robert Hooker's father. Yep, correct. Spot on. Yeah. And then, so your great grandmother is Elizabeth Fargy, as you said. And then we've got these four kids, I'm assuming. This could be, this could, uh, I'm sorry, five kids, um, I'm assuming. He looks like he might be the eldest, and these are the younger ones. And that must be these other people, David. Uh, Frederick, uh, Peter, and James. I don't know which is which. I don't really care at this point. Um, I might care later, but for now, I just like that I'm starting to put together names in the tree. And indeed, um, when I go back to uh, my hint or my search, if I click on uh, Robert Hooker, now I just a quick note here. Uh, sometimes it's hard for people to uh, see this, uh, and I'm just going to call it your attention. Uh, this, I'm in someone else's tree right now. I clicked on another person's tree. They're okay with me doing this. But you have to know when you do this that you are not looking at your own tree. You're looking at someone else's. But this is uh, beginning to show me the uh, the details, right, um, uh, of um james gordon hooker the uh, great great i'm sorry the great grandfather great grandmother and uh this is uh i don't know who this is but i'll get there although i don't like that uh that name uh gay hooker that just seems like an odd name to me <laughs> uh, oh, okay so that we've, we've had a few jokes made in the last in, over the years about our last names i get it <laughs> yeah, let's take a quick look. One family. She definitely looks like a normal person to me. But anyway, um, so so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab. I'm going to I'm going to go to James Gordon Hooker, who I don't have in my tree, right? But this person does, and I'm going to. Uh, I uh, am I going to? I should be able to attach him to my tree. Hmm. Save to tree. So I'm going to save James Gordon Hooker to my tree, uh, add him as a new person, James Gordon Hooker. Here's his information. He's deceased. I'm going to save. And uh, now I'm going to, I'm back to my, my uh, whatever it's called, my tree, not in that other person's tree anymore. Uh, and I'm looking at this new record that I just created. Well, now we'll see that there are seven hints just waiting for me on James Gordon Hooker. So let's go look at those hints. This is one of my favorite parts of being on Ancestry.com is it basically is almost like a, a guide guiding you through. It's not always right. I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but um, it, you know, it's much of the time it is true. So um, let's see, what, where am I? I am in uh, the hints. And now this hint here uh, of, uh, of the photograph, I'm going to go ahead and accept that, bring it into my record. Looks like we've got a, someone took a photo of 
the um, gravestone of uh, James Hooker and his wife, David's grandmother, and what, uh, a, a baby, uh, uncle? I don't know if it's a baby, but an uncle. Yeah, he had a brother that died at two years old. Yeah. All right, so it's taking forever to come up, but I'm just going to go ahead and uh, save it to to uh, James Gordon Hooker in my tree. Um, and, uh, oh, there's a couple more pictures, and I, I'm not going to – well, well, let's look at them. What the heck? I mean, you ought to look at them. Don't just grab anything without looking at it. Um, I like this because this kind of looks like that same guy, uh, a little bit gained a little bit of weight since uh, the war. Uh, and over here, this looks like his wife, a little bit older. Uh, and these two people, I don't know who they are, but this tells me that at least whoever uh, posted this picture, that these are Gene Simpson Fargy and David Fargy. And I'm assuming in due time, they will come into my um, into my tree as well. Uh, all righty. Now, uh, let's, I'm going to do the, the member tree last. Let's do this one next. Um, here's a guy named James Hooker, born in 1893. Scroll up. Uh, looks like that's accurate, or it's the same as when we think he was born. Died 1971. Yep, looks like uh, same death date. That's very good, very promising. It's in the UK and Ireland. Okay, that's promising. He had a wife named Elizabeth and a child named William. That we just saw that on the um, on the gravestone. Oh well, there you go. So it's a, another picture of the gravestone. And and ancestry asks this question every time: Is this the person that you have in your tree? Before we attach it to your tree, does this does it look like it matches your tree? And it does indeed for the reasons that we've just talked about. So I click yes, and then it's going to show me um, a comparison. So this is who's in my tree, James Gordon Hooker, and the data I have about James Gordon Hooker. And then here's the information from that um, uh, find a grave index. And it looks like same name. Little, I mean, it doesn't have the name Gordon in it. It only has the year, not the full date. Um, 3 August, spelled differently, but it's the same date. Um, and the burial place, though, I didn't have that before. Uh, now I have it. So it's going to grab that and add it to my record. And I'm going to click save to my tree. Sometimes uh, if there's if one of these over here is more accurate than one of these, like sometimes you'll get a, a middle name on the left and you didn't know the middle name, or you'll get the full date of their birth and you only had a year. And I'll, if you want to uh, do that, you just click on this and it copies it over to there. Um, and, and it's very easy to build and and sort of refine the accuracy of your um, of your research that way. Uh, okay, still I'm going to stall one more time before we go up to do this ancestry memory tree. Here's another one from the 1901 Scotland census. Um, all right, uh, so here it says he was born about 1894 uh, in uh, this place. That's not the same. I mean, it has okay about 1894. I'm okay with that being close. I don't like that. Oh, this is residence. That's not where he was born. So this is where he lives. Oh, look at that. It's got his father's name and his mother. I don't have a father and a mother. So here, the, the Scotland census is potentially going to help me build out my tree. But first, I have to review it. And I really like this. Um, many censuses um, have the actual image uh, that you can go to. Apparently, Scotland could not afford cameras, so they don't have images. But um, a lot of times, the census does. And you can actually open up a scanned uh, photo of the, the page itself and, and look at what was written by the census taker. And oftentimes, it has even more information than, than this metadata that has been um, uh, typed in by somebody at, when they read the census document. You've heard about uh, indexing as something we should be doing or you might want to do. Well, what you're seeing here is the result of indexing. Somebody read this, looked at this uh, image and typed in what they saw. And it be then became searchable text. And uh, 
that's why they call it indexing because you can search an index and it makes it easy for me now to um, review and grab it and put it into my tree. So let's just quickly look at this. Robert Hooker, Jane Hooker, those are the new people. Uh, okay, oh, uh, Muscle Burrow, uh, that sounds familiar. Um, oh, he's a scholar, I like that. Um, let, oh, let's see, he's young though, he's only seven years old. Scholar means he's a school child. Um, and then here is the family uh, information from that census document. So we see James Hooker, our man. Well, he's actually not our man. He's the father of uh, Robert Hooker, the guy that we were working on. Has a seven-year-old. He's got some brothers and a sister, a brother and a sister, uh, two sisters, uh, three sisters, and another two brothers. And then he's got his two parents. Does that look right? It does look right to me. So I'm going to say yes. And now Ancestry will uh, have me do a comparison. James Hooker, yes, yes. Um, let's see, birth. I don't know about this. So I'm just going to leave it alone for now. Uh, in 1901, this is where I lived. That was nice to know. Now here is a new person, the parents of James Hooker, the ones that are new. So I'm just going to grab both of those from the census. And then some children that I didn't know. Uh, there's a David Hooker, Mary Jane Hooker. I'm just going to grab everything that the census had to say. Notice that it's incomplete. You know, it's it says about 1887. Who knows? You know, maybe it was 1888. Maybe it was 1886. Uh, but this is the first, as I said, I'm just trying to gather and build this tree right now. I'm not super worried about accuracy just yet. Next week, we're going to go in and begin to refine the, these records and begin to identify what's you know fake news and what's real news and how multiple sources can uh, help to corroborate the evidence that you have all right well uh, we have one more hint for james gordon hooker here uh, it's called an ancestor member tree and it may be multiple trees when you when we click on it here sometimes they find multiples yeah so there's multiple people who have been researching or have this person on their tree. Some of them are just in the early stages and don't have very much. Other people, usually the one at the top, it has the most. I like that it says it, says it has three sources um, and three photos. That implies to me that this person has spent some time anyway on it. But look at this treasure trove of family information here. Um, it's got the father, looks like it has his death date. I only know the birth date. Uh, got the mother's death date and some more about her name. Looks like they're, well, we'll see, but it might be that she went by two different names or that they don't know which is her name. It's got who he married. Ah, we've got a, a spouse coming in. I don't have a spouse currently, as well as some kids. So I'm going to check this box here. Um, and I'm going to say review selected tree hints. And now we're going to go in and quickly review. And I know I'm going fairly quickly here, folks, but the purpose for you is not to get to know David's grandfather that well. It's just to see that we that Ancestry will help you build out your tree fairly quickly using pretty accurate, uh, fairly accurate, and fairly broad set of source material. Uh, so anyway, we've got the marriage information. We've got the parents. We took We got the parents last time. But remember, it was about 1866. Look at this. This person, in their research, has come to the conclusion that it's the 14th of December. So I click on that to replace my bit of data with what they found out. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't. Do I trust the the census for where he was born, or do I trust this guy's research? I'm going to go with his this guy's research for now, uh, for for no particular reason. Where, when he died, nice. Um, here's Jane, Jean Gordon. Um, I have a feeling we're gonna, we might have to spend some time on that name a little bit later, maybe next week. Some more data. Here's Elizabeth. Um, we've got um, pretty much uh, nothing new on her. Um, here is um, a son. Let me just uh, check. Notice it says, this is a new person. And I'm gonna ask the question, is this really a new person? And yeah, it's saying, I don't have anybody else it could be. 
because sometimes uh, if the name is spelled a little differently uh, or uh, some of the data is a little bit off, you will find that uh, it doesn't realize that it's an existing person. Uh, here's David Hooker, nothing new there. Mary Jane. Oh, we have a better date here. It says 1888, not about 1887. And I think I'll take that for now. Uh, other children. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who these people are. Man, they're prolific, those hookers. Uh, sorry, bad hooker joke number three for the evening. And I'm going to save all of that to my tree. I'm just trying to build the tree right now. And in fact, uh, I've had enough for tonight with the great, great grandfather, which is where, I'm sorry, the great grandfather, which is where we've been spending a bunch of our time. Um, James Gordon Hooker. Uh, notice that we now have, you know, all of these um, kids and uh, we have, and in fact, the one that we care about is this one, Robert Hooker. So let's go back to the man of the hour, right? Robert Hooker is David's grandfather, the one that we started all of this with. And now I get back and I don't have my glasses on. Does that say six or nine? Anyways, he's got some hints. Bear with me as I spend just a few minutes here on the hints. Um, okay, well, this picture, it has both. It has him too. We saved it on his dad's record. Let's save it here. Save this one, uh, that one and that one. Okay. Uh, so here, here we have a UK burial and cremation index that they found for me. Robert Hooker died on this date. That looks right. Uh, buried on this date. And so let's review that. It looks right. Uh, we learned that he was cremated. Is that accurate, David? Yes, sir. It is. Yeah. So um, that's a nice little fact that we've uh, we've learned to put some more context into his life. Um, and we've added that to his record. So we're going to click save. And I'm going to do one more thing. We have another ancestor fam uh, member tree that I'm going to look at just to see if someone else's work might uh, help me a little bit. Now, <clears throat> we're getting really close to the modern day. And that's why you start to see things that say private. Um, when people are living, uh, even if they're on someone else's tree, uh, normally you're not allowed to see them because it's just for privacy. You're just not supposed to be able to go researching all, you know, where someone was born and uh, all that, someone who's living. Uh, once they're dead, then uh, it's more fair game to do it. But I do see a, a new name here, uh, Agnes Cunningham Gay. And uh, is Agnes your mother? No, no, that's my granny. That's my mom's mom. Man, I got this all back. Oh yeah, there's the there's your aunt right there. Yeah. Um, I don't see. Let's see. There's Elizabeth Fargay, Agnes Gay. I don't see. My mom's still alive, so she's private. Gay pride hooker? Seriously? Hey, come on, come on, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Wait. Is that for real? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's let's go get her and this one. We're gonna. You're coming to Scotland with me one time. <laughs> Look, uh, it's just I'm just having fun. I hope it's not. A, I don't mean it offensively. These are your relatives. I should be more careful. But those are some fun names. Um, so now I'm comparing what I have with what these two other trees had. And before I start accepting things, I'm probably gonna accept most of it. Now, if I'm David uh, Grant, I know these people. I almost, I probably know every bit of data on here or have a much better sense than Brad Goodwin does as he's just looking at other people's research. But I'm not gonna ask David whether everything's right or not, um, uh, just in the interest of time. But something to, Something you always have to remember, and we're going to spend a lot more time on this next week. Um, Ancestry.com users and FamilySearch.org users are amateur genealogists, by and large. And they run the gamut from uh, really detailed uh, genealogists who, who you know check every source and, and they want to craft the perfect record. Uh, uh, 
I think I think of Brother Coles that way. You know, just a lot of um, attention to getting those the details right. That range from that all the way down to people who are doing what I'm doing, blindly accepting what someone else says is true without any um, checking of sources. That's what I'm doing right now. This person uh, or these these two people who have these uh, family trees that I'm checking, I'm just take I'm not stealing exactly, but I'm just blindly accepting what they've done. Uh, some of it. And I need to recognize that when I go back next week on our call and begin to uh, refine the the data, I need to recognize that a lot of a, a measurable amount of what I have might be wrong. And I want to start looking for sources that prove or narrow down uh, the facts to get as close to the facts as possible for a given person. So just a reminder here, we're accepting a lot of stuff right now without a lot of attention to detail or accuracy. Uh, I'm good with what we got there. James Gordon Hooker, 4th of July, nice. Uh, nothing too interesting there that I need to worry about it being different. Uh, Elizabeth Fargi, um, great-grandmother, and uh, here's Agnes Cunningham. Wait a minute. Is Gay? Yeah, Gay is her last name, right? Uh, her maiden name. And then uh, here is Catherine Hooker. And here is um, Agnes Hooker. Here is uh, the son, James. Nothing new there. Nothing new here. I'm just basically um, validating and seeing that if there's anything new that I want to pick up there. Usually, if there's something different on this side than what you have, it will there'll be a little uh, a little tag that says different or new or whatever, and that helps draw your eye to the fact that you should be looking at that. Well, all right, um, we've done quite a bit tonight. Um, we let me just. Uh, Click on my grant family tree. And uh, oh, I don't like that. Well, I don't like this view, uh, but that's okay because I took another view of it and I'm going to go there right now. We started with this uh, basically this picture and somebody else's tags on it. And then we went into, fam into Ancestry and began accepting hints and helping Ancestry find more information about this family uh, to the point that I found out um, his uh, uh, parents. Um, and I haven't really gone up the Grant family lane, but on his mother's side of the family uh, into the uh, grandparents era and the great grandparents era in a matter of 30 or 35 minutes. It's, uh, uh, it's a really cool tool that allows us to uh, build stuff really quickly. All right, uh, before I open it up for any questions, um, I will just uh, tell you that I'm planning on doing this again a week from a week from tonight, same time, same bat channel, same URL. Uh, next week on the 11th of June, we'll be um, really spending more time in uh, Ancestry and then and getting into family search as well to understand uh, how family search works and how the two can work together as we uh, research and document these people more carefully. Uh, I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to stay with the Grant family or switch over to uh, part of my family. I, I have to sort of go in and look around and, and see which one is going to help me to uh, point out the stuff that I want to point out better. But uh, in either case, we will be going, you know, peeling back the onion and going one step deeper into our research process. Alrighty, there you have it. Uh, any questions? Thank you, Brad. Great question. Thank you, Brent. Uh, insightful question. Uh, there probably aren't questions, but if there are, I don't know, there might be. Who's got one? So what if you have documents that show you know, certain data and someone else comes in, I'm talking about family search, 
and they come in and they are consistently changing stuff and they don't have the same data that you do or they don't have any sources to show and they just it keeps changing back and forth well i have a i have a point of view on that it's a question that I think we can uh, also delve into next week um, as we really start comparing the two. Actually, maybe even the third week, a data detective okay. week. But let me give a short answer for now. For me, in most cases, I don't care. Okay. Um, I, I barely care whether Grandpa Lyle died on the 5th of June or the 3rd of June. Sure. At some level, I do care, but I barely care. In, in reality, it doesn't matter what day he died. Um, we can still honor his life and understand his life without having that exact thing right. Mm -hmm. uh, but that the, the uh, fact that I just chose is, is in fact kind of trivial in that regard. Well, hold on, brief aside, someone might be thinking, wait a minute, what if we do temple work for somebody and they died on a different day? Well, I don't know the church's policy. I, I'm speaking purely off the cuff, but I mean, if you think of how much crap genealogy has been put through the temple and we have full trust that all those ordinances are viable um, I, I'm not too concerned about it but there are some facts uh, key facts about a person's life who they married whether they had a certain child or not yeah. uh, were were they a polygamist or not that uh, one might consider to be more substantial and on familysearch.org uh, the the um, the standard way, I'm not going to go into it. I'm not going to show it right now. The standard way that you do it is you create a discussion. Uh, there's a tab called discussion. Uh, very few people who use Ancestry or who use family search actually use the discussion feature. Mm -hmm. And you will find when you put a discussion, uh, even a well thought through discussion in there, um, no one will read it for years. You might get a, someone will respond to you three years later. You know, right. so right. it's it's kind of lonely work. Right. Um, and the, so if I go in and what I'll usually do is, in fact, I, I had to do this this past week. My dad called me and he said, Dad, I'm sorry, my dad called me living. And he said, Brad, I'm I'm dead. Um, log into familysearch.org and oh. uh, you'll see that I'm deceased. Uh, and it was my cousin's daughter who uh, entered an errant record, probably uploaded it from Ancestry or something that made him deceased. And I had to go in and undo mm -hmm. that, that record. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a bit of a, I think there's a, there's a culture in family search of uh, politeness and treading softly. Yeah. So yeah, I made the change. And when you okay. make a change, it pops up and says, why do you think this is true? And what I'll do is I'll type in, this is true because I just spoke to Lyle and I know that he's alive right. and that sounds a little snarky, but, and I have, um, uh, what I've, what I've done is I have disconnected him, this, this second Lyle record from the relationship with the parents so that he doesn't appear on the family tree. Please view the discussion for, for more information. And then mm -hmm. I'll go into the discussion area and type out my reasoning. Okay. Okay. And then th th that's, I guess that's the approach I would take. A right. lot, you know, paragraphs, a paragraph or two, rather than a, a sentence or two about why you've made the change. Yeah. And then you may just find some, uh, some battles, some disagreements. You just have to agree to disagree. Yeah. So specifically, really quick, um, it's my great grandmother who was, um, her parents were put in at, they are, the ones that were put in are actually her foster parents, not her real parents. And so that makes a huge difference of what that does to the line as far as, you know, yeah. doing work and who you're actually researching for. And so I went ahead and put in there to change it back um, that I had personal knowledge from l listening to my great, well, it was my grandmother who was telling me about this. So there was personal knowledge, there's personal, you know, documents as far as the family Bible that actually show, you know, her name. It acknowledges her her fa uh, foster parent name or whatever, but it also, you know, acknowledges that this was her birth name. Anyway, I, I can go on. But, yeah. but then I did have a discussion, a very short discussion with someone who 
was going to look into it and he was very amenable to, you know, okay, I think we should, he did come back to me and he said, I think we should change it back to Marshall instead of Knox. And I understand your reasoning and you know, whatever. And so now I need to load up the document to, to show that. But there are other places in my family that people aren't so amenable. So I was just right. curious on how to tread lightly, I guess. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, if you, uh, if I were you, I would take a photo or scan of the family Bible uh -huh. and upload it to the, uh, what are they called? Um, stories or whatever they're called on familysearch.org. Right. Uh, Life story or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Memory. Or something. Memory. Yeah. Oh, and, memory. and point them to the memory. Okay. All okay. right. Good luck with that. And we can talk more as we delve into this later next week and the week after. Okay. Any other questions? I have nothing but thank you, Brad. This has been awesome. Yes. All right. Uh, let me just tell you my vision and then I'll wrap up the call. Uh, I, I am not the family history consultant in this ward and I'm not uh, lobbying to be that person. Or am I? Uh, I'm, I'm not. Um, but I have this, um, if, if, if they, oh, wait, I saw Jordan Smith was on here. No, he's gone now. Okay. Um, I have this uh, idea that, it, that I think it would be an awesome uh, project to, to build a ward family tree. Uh, I'm convinced uh -oh. that in our ward, 60%, maybe 80% of the people are related within six generations. Uh, and it, it might it might be very interesting to see uh, how we're connected in that way. Uh, now, it could also be exclusionary to some who aren't connected in that way, uh, who don't have pioneer heritage, which ties a lot of our families together, who come from far away, uh, like, uh, anyway, not LDS background. But still, uh, I think it would be an interesting thing. And someday I will create a ward family tree and uh, we're all going to be cousins. <laughs> 